glad you all could come tonight for this talk. We're extending Memorial Day a little bit longer to honor some of Rockford heroes, and Bill's going to fill us in on it. But I want to welcome you to have refreshments okay. too, yeah. and sit back and join the march. Uh, yeah, my name is Bill Hogan. I, I own the Downtown Brockton Museum, which I, I did have a physical location up until about seven or up seven months, and the uh, the landlord had want, landlord wanted her rent. <laughs> and um, it's kind of comical because up until that point, we just did the best to uh, to, um, to to get by. But this, I guess, they have some plans down there, for some uh, some uh, rehab of the building and everything. So, um, my downtown museum is um, kind of like a traveling museum at the moment. And um, to get back to the landlord, it's uh, I'm not mad at her. You know, that's she was very good to me over the years and everything. But it was. It was time to get somebody in there that could actually afford to pay the whole rent, and I was that was a losing proposition for me down there. Um, I was spending my own money constantly, so um, I'm not bitter that I'm out of there. But right now, I'm in the library. I am at the um, the JLS mailing uh, services on Crescent Street. We opened up a mailing museum there. I'm working with the Brockton Rocks on opening up the Brockton Athletic Hall of Fame. Um, I'm pretty well on my way doing that. Doing that. So uh, my museum could be all over Brockton. <laughs> so I still call myself the Downtown Brockton Museum, which is more of a traveling, uh, traveling museum. And you can catch me here at the museum usually uh, every Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday night. So I'm going to get a cot. And I'm going to sneak into one of these rooms and, and sleep here overnight. Uh, but tonight. Um, we're going to talk about two, uh, two people that were, um, both gave their lives in World War II. But I'm not going to exclusively stay there either. I'm going to mention some other things that we have going on for veterans here in Brockton. Um, these, two, these two individuals happen to be um, both from the, uh, the east side. I, I stumbled across this because I was organizing a swimming reunion and trying to bring back the youth swim meets to Brockton, which we accomplished last year. But I just happened to be at Salisbury Park on Crescent Street. Does everybody know where Salisbury Park is? Everybody know where the Cosgrove Pool is on the east side? Um, I just happened to be there on Keep Brockton Beautiful Day or something and I was just picking up rubbish and they happened to have the gate open to the pool. And I walked in, and there was a, 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 um, a sign, a commemorative sign, a plaque, that the pool had opened up in 1966. Well, this was 2016 when I had walked through. All I need is an excuse to have a ceremony for anything is just the smallest thing. So I realized that 2016 was the 50th anniversary of the pool opening. So I get carried away. The next thing you know, I'm organizing a swimming reunion. I'm organizing the swim meet that came along last year. And then I find the Potosi Memorial, which is right, kind of right next to the, the Cosgrove Pool. And I come upon Lieutenant uh, John Robert Fox. I do some research. I find out that he's awarded the Medal of Honor in 1997, I believe. And I says, well, that's interesting. <laughs> and I went off on that. So that's just a little background on how this all came about. So I didn't start out trying to do this. I just ended up uh, tripping on it. So we're going to start with Cosgrove. Um, I know more about John Fox than I do about Cosgrove. Um, the family, one of the uh, nephews is a Brockton firefighter. I was hoping he'd come tonight. Um, he gave me these photos. There's only two known photos of, Lawrence, of uh, Lawrence Randall Cosgrove. He's on the far right. He was the first casualty in World War II from Brockton, and very likely the first, one of the first, well, definitely one of the first casualties from the United States in World War II. Um, he was on the Reuben James. The Reuben James was sunk on um, October 31st, 1941. So we were technically not in the war yet. Pearl Harbor didn't happen until December 7th. So this was on Halloween in 1941, and Lawrence is right here on the right-hand side. The family gave me two photos. They only have two photos, known photos, of Lawrence Crosgrove. 
I still have the originals. I haven't seen the family since 2016. Um, I do have them. They're secured. I made digital copies, so we, we do have copies of them. I don't know who the other sailors are. Uh, I'm hoping to find out someday. I have to um, be honest with you, I was expecting to be downstairs. They had a little more control of the video down there. I mean, Paula and I had to put this together real quick, so bear with me. Okay, it's, I'll, I'll get it done, but it might have to go back and forth. So Lawrence is on the right. Here, he's in the driver's seat. Now, I don't know if this is Brock, but the little guy with the camera is the guy that gave me the photos. Right here. So this is Lawrence. And to the best of anybody's knowledge, those are the only two known photos of Lawrence Cosgrove, other than what made the newspaper. Okay, a little bit of the history before we get going. Uh, Lawrence Randall Cosgrove, I don't know when he was born. Um, he did die on October 31st, 1941, aboard the USS um, Reuben James. He was a gunner mate second class and was a petty officer second class in the United States Navy. Uh, he was killed by a German torpedo attack on the USS destroyer Reuben James on October 31st, 1941. That's the official death certificate. I just reread it, what I told you before. Um, he was the first casualty in World War II from Brockton. His name appears on the Potosi Memorial at Salisbury Park and, um, and also the pool. The pool is named after Lawrence Randall Cosgrove. Um, his name is also on the Roll of Honor at City Hall. They have all the World War II uh, casualties listed there. Um, uh, for his, um, Lawrence did receive the uh, Purple Heart and he either received or was awarded the Combat Action Ribbon, World War II Victory Medal, American Campaign Medal, Distinguished Unit Citation, Good Contact Medal, Conduct, rather, conduct Medal, uh, European African Middle Eastern Campaign Medal, and the Navy Expeditionary Medal. And obviously he was awarded these after he had passed tonight. Paul, how do you say it costs? Them? I can't say it. Yes, after that, I can say it. <laughs> um, he was awarded all those medals. And uh, we're gonna, I'll go over that a little bit here. The, the irony of it, I, I, I redid a lot of research here. We, we're used to the internet, and we get our news almost right away. Papa Gino's closes at 8 o'clock, and we know at 8.05. You know, it's a little different news, but I mean, we know everything from the internet on, on the internet. But things did take a little bit longer to be reported. Um, back then. Uh, this is the Times, like I say, I have to focus in here a little bit. Um, I'm trying to figure out what town this came from. I'm going to go to the Enterprise. But the, um, the point I, I was trying to make is um, the Enterprise actually had news of this on the 31st. They actually had a printed edition. There's a copy on the chairs by, of, the, of the disaster. <clears throat> so um, I, gotta, I don't know how they got the thing out that quick, but they actually did get the news out that the Reuben James had gone down. Um, tragically, the, the families knew that, that um, Cosgrove was on, on, the, um, on the Reuben James. But they only knew that the Reuben James had gone down. They didn't know if he was one of the casualties or one of the survivors. So that's kind of um, sad. So we're going to go back a little bit. This is the Reuben James. This was actually a World War I destroyer that was pressed into service to uh, accompany um, British uh, convoys. And at the time, it was based out of Greenland. And that, and it only, it, that's about as, it took, the, it took the convoys from the United States as far as Greenland. Then the British took the convoys from Greenland, Iceland area, to England. The Reuben James was torpedoed off the coast of Iceland in early morning. And this is 
Unfortunately, it's going down. Let's see here. And the bow went down almost immediately, so somebody was in the area with a, with a uh, camera right when it happened. And out of the 144 um, people on board, only 44 survived. All of, all of the officers were killed. They were all on deck, and they took the brunt of it. I, I really believe, the more research I do, that Cosgrove was probably, literally, the first casualty in World War II for the United States. Just from where he was sleeping and where the torpedo hit. Just some close-ups. Now, like I say, I have this, there's some photographs here you can take with you. I have a few more over here you can look at later. Uh, we'll see if Shannon actually put this together and, uh, and Paula for me. So a little bit of the articles. And th this made, this was obviously um, worldwide news. See right here? Lost Australia, similar to those used by Britain. I'm trying to figure out what newspaper this was. I'm changing our policy. So this was November 1st. So this, this, this came out the next day. So the Enterprise is right on top of it. Okay, 19... 42, his brother, Richard Cosgrove, graduated from Brocken High and he joined the Army. And joined the Army, I mean the Navy, <laughs> joined the Navy to avenge his brother. And um, he did. He's, uh, I, I wish I had made copies of this. <laughs> this would be nice to hand out. Um, he, he has a poem on here. If you, if you give me a um, your email or something. I can make copies of this and send them over to you. you wanna, it's pretty. It's pretty interesting stuff. Um, Richard. Richard is still alive. I wish I could read it. And I do have a yearbook from 1942 over here. Where you can you can go come through it. Try to bring up some extra resources. Technically, Lawrence Cosgrove was, um, was, miss, was missing in action because they didn't, they didn't actually find all the bodies that were lost in the, um, in the ocean. And he was, he was uh, eventually declared dead, missing in action, but at first they really didn't know. So it took a little while before they confirmed that nobody had survived. Um, the water out there was just freezing. It wouldn't last more than 10 or 15 minutes if you were, you were in the water. So. Um, some they did pull 44 people out, um, but they never did find Lawrence. He's buried in um, in Cambridge, England, along with the rest of the. Uh, you know, physically he's not there, of course, but they do have the markers. This is in Cambridge, England. And this is just a few photos of the. Um, of the cemetery. Like I said, you can go to City Hall and there is a memorial in there about all the World War II veterans and World War I, Korea, and unfortunately Vietnam and everybody else. Okay, this is the Lawrence Car Group pool. Does everybody know where this, this is? You on the east side? Anybody not? You do? You don't? Yeah. It's not where, great. Where is this? This is on the east side. Um, Crescent Street, it's not very far from downtown. It's actually within walking distance. Um, Crescent, Crescent, um, the, Pluff, the, Pluff, the Pluff Academy. Yeah, everybody knows of the Pluff Academy. It sits right behind it. Pluff, 
Joseph A. Plouffe. I think it's A. a. Anyway, um, I'm showing you this photo here because um, when we talk about the Fox Boot uh, Memorial that we're planning, this, this shot right here is where the Fox Memorial is being, that's where our plan is to put it right where, our, right where this photo was taken from, and it's looking at the Causeway pool. So we're planning a little bit of a veterans area in that area so that we tie the Fox, the Potosi, the Cosgrove, even Union Cemetery together so there's a little bit of a veterans area in that area. So the pool was named after Lawrence in 1969. It was the pool opened in 1966 and then rededicated under Lawrence Randall Cosgrove in 1969. So the 50th anniversary of the pool is being named Lawrence Cosgrove is this year. So we're having a rededication ceremony on July 27 at the pool right before the, the swim meet. There's a Marco Riley Memorial swim meet we're running that day also. Now Marco Riley was a Vietnam veteran. So you can see the veterans thing developing here. And I'm not that smart. So it's just happened. <laughs> Five years ago, I could not tell you I was planning this. I was not. I just keep on, keep, things just keep on happening. So this is the Potosi Memorial. Uh, Fox's name is on here. Crossgrove's name is on here. Potosi's on here. Um, there's a number of other um, memorials in the, in the area. Tomaselli Square. Um, I will show you that a little bit later. This is the pool today. I don't mean literally today, but last year. Um, the pool itself is actually very unique. It's a six meter, uh, 50 meter pool. There's only four known 50 meter pools in the whole state. So I'm taking a, a tragedy and I'm, I'm planning for the future. The, um, we're trying to develop this into a swimming train facility. We're already running the, uh, the uh, Mark Cosgrove, uh, Mark O'Reilly uh, swim meet. We're trying to develop this into a training facility for swimmers that are really kind of in the elite um, uh, level. A lot of them would probably come from the, the South Shore, where they have a lot of um, uh, swimming uh, clubs. So for them, I was a, I was a swimmer in Brockton High. I certainly was not an elite. But when you get to a certain level, to be able to train on a 50-meter pool is something that we would have died for when we were in high school. So the Brockton High School is, is beautiful, but it's 25 yards. And it's like any, it's like any sport or any... any um, uh, trade or any profession, when you get to a certain level, you're looking, you're looking for this little extra, you know, little extra. And for a swimmer to be able to train, a good one, somebody that was maybe possibly go to the Olympics or the Junior Olympics or anything, to be able to train on a 50 uh, uh, meter pool is just, it's, it's, it's just very rare. So we have this hidden gem here in Brockton that I didn't even know about until a couple of years ago. So we've, we're going to try to develop this also into a, um, into a, um, a training facility that would be early, you know, early morning before the public swim. So just some random uh, photos. Um, I went down there one day and I was, we were getting ready for the swim meet. And I couldn't believe it, they painted over the lines. Did you notice what the lines disappeared in the pool? We have the lines on the pool on the bottom. Well, this, this tells the swimmers how to swim straight. I go down there, we're getting ready for the swim meet, and they painted over the lines. <laughs> so, this, unfortunately, it was a year before <laughs> the swim meet. And I'm thinking, how do they know? What do they do? Are they out to get me? <laughs> I'm trying to do something there. And fortunately, the city went and repainted them. And we ended up with the pool looking uh, pretty good, and we were able to pull out the swim meet. And uh, so here's the, here's the pool when it's being used. This old guy. That's me. Uh, this is when we were, we were planning for the Cosgrove uh, dedication. Um, we'll go by that one real quick. Uh, we, had, we had a swimming reunion. The, re the reason I even bring this all up is we're trying, to bring, we're trying to bring attention to the park, which will bring attention to the veterans, which will bring attention to Brockton. It's all good. So we're tying all this together. This is Robbie Sims on the left, if anybody knew uh, he was a boxer from Brockton. His brother was Marvin Hagler. Uh, Robbie was almost as good as Marvin. He almost won the, uh, the title. 
Bobby's a nice kid. Uh, this was, I forget his name, but he was the pool manager for about 30 years. And that was his last year. And this is our reunion, Mayor, Mayor Carpenter, myself, and Gary Leonard, who'll be here in a little while. And so we had a pretty good turnout at the, uh, at the reunion. These people were all Cosgrove Library uh, lifeguards at one time. A little bit older now. This is Tiger Moore on the right. He is a boxer also. Um, Tigers can tell a tall tale. And I can imagine what Lucia is thinking as Tiger's explaining things to her. <laughs> And here's the swim meet. This is a great shot. Back in the background is Brendan O'Neill, Brockton High swimming coach. You know him, Gene. Uh, Timmy Cruz, what to um, city council. And this is Jerry Cassidy, the uh, state representative. They look like they're in jail. So I'm not going to say too much, but they are politicians, so we'll uh, leave that alone. <laughs> and just some random shots. We had a great time. What, what brought this about a little bit is, I, I mentioned the Veterans Trail uh, a little earlier, and the um, Brockton actually does a very good job honoring their veterans. They, it's certainly not per, uh, perfect, but we do have um, memorials all over the city. One of the, one of the problems is, is they're all over the city. We do that in Brockton anyway. We tend to put things everywhere. Um, but I got to give them credit. Some of the memorials are very uh, they're nice. They're, they're to the point. Um, unfortunately, we lock them up. Um, they're gated in. We can't we can't see them. You know, through a gate. Um, so I understand the, the vandalism part, and the, the graffiti and everything. But um, to me, a locked up memorial that you can't see doesn't. Prove the point. Not maybe prove the point, but you know, why well, have the memorial if you can't go in and read it? So uh, I'm on a little bit of a, um, a mission to get these things opened up a little bit, um, so that people, the history of Brockton can be appreciated more. You know, and it, and it scans. We go back to the Revolutionary War. Um, the Fletcher Webster Street in the village right next to Tukas Playground. It's named after Fletcher Webster, a vet, uh, veteran of um, Revolutionary War. I think he was the captain from Brockton, the 54th uh, Massachusetts. So we have all these memorials all over Brockton, and nobody knows it. Um, so our, the Brockton history in the war just keeps, it goes back to right to the beginning, you know, right to the Revolutionary War. So um, <coughs> some of these things, uh, Some of the things I'm going to actually need help with, I'm hoping to maybe sign up some volunteers here because I don't know where they all are. Uh, there's, a, there's a cemetery next to Tukas Playground. Does everybody know where Tukas Playground is? There's a cemetery right next to Tukas Playground. Does anybody know where the cemetery is? No, I do, but that's, I'm crazy. But there's these things all over Brockton that just are, uh, are kind of hidden. So some of these are the, um, things at, at um, Salisbury Park that I had planned. This is actually, it's, I'm not going to say it's an artist's rendition because I found it on, on Google, um, Google search. I think this is West Bridgewater, <laughs> uh, next to the Canoe River. I'm pretty sure that this is the uh, Memorial Park. And my idea is, we'll get to the Fox thing, but it's my idea is this would be the Fox Memorial over here. And the, um, the Potosi Memorial that's already in place. So, what that brought on is, this is the Potosi Memorial, right here. And if you envision what I just showed, and use your imagination a little bit. So, if I could just ask, who's Potosi? He, was, he died in World War II also, and it's a Potosi Club. They, I've heard of it, yeah. yeah, they are the ones that put the memorial up. So it's a World War II veteran, World War II memorial, but everybody calls it the Potosi Memorial. They're the ones that put it, um, that donated it and put it in there. Um, 
So that's that's who that is. I think it was, uh, and the club's named after him, obviously. Potosi Club's on Montello Street. Um, I've been doing quite a bit of research on Lieutenant John Fox. So some of this I can do right off the top of my head. <laughs> and um, it be a little easier for me, to be honest with you. He was, um, he was originally from Cincinnati. He was born in Cincinnati, Ohio on May 18th. 1915. I'm doing this off the top of my head, so you can tell I've done a little bit of research. Last Saturday, when we did our mass memories, it happened to be his birthday on um, on May 18th. So I did a little bit of a presentation, uh, a little a little bit of a um, acknowledgement of him on, on uh, mass memories. So it's on mass memories. I didn't get carried away, uh, only because the story is so huge. I would have been there all night long, and I probably couldn't have done it justice. So I didn't. Uh, I just mentioned it. I didn't do too much on it. Um, this, he was um, born in Cincinnati, Ohio. He died on December 26th, the day after Christmas, in Soma Colonia, Italy, 1944. He's buried in Colebrook Cemetery, Whitman Mass. And he was posthumously awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor in 1997. Okay, this is, I have a couple of photos of him. Okay, this is his, uh, grave marker in um, Holbrook Cemetery in Whitman. And from what I understand, it's a family plot. And I think it's the Marrows family plot. Am I correct, Gene, or not? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it, it, uh, yeah. This is Gene Marrow. His wife yeah. Thank you. passed away years ago. She's, she's buried there, too, yeah. Gene, uh, uh, Gene's on here. Gene's, Gene's grandmother. No, that's my first cousin. The first, my first, first cousin was married to Lieutenant Fox. So when I don't know something, I can just ask him. <laughs> um, so it says family plot in uh, Colebrook Cemetery in Whitman. And so it's the Marrow family plot because John Fox was from Cincinnati. So it, I, I didn't think that people in Cincinnati would have a family plot in Whitman. So I'm glad I found out for sure. Um, I'm going to give you... A, more. Thanks here. Right, this is the Medal Congressional Medal. Okay, I'm going to give you a story a little bit. I hope I can stand up. Can you still hear me? The um, he trained at Fort Devens. Okay, he was um, the, uh, a, little bit, a little bit ahead of myself. Okay, so we know he was born in Cincinnati. Came to Brockton. He met Arlene Marrow, married her, and that was in uh, 1942, I believe. So, anyway, he was born in Cincinnati. He was actually raised in Wyoming, Wyoming, Ohio. Okay, from there, he attended Ohio State University. He left, he transferred from Ohio State University to Wilberforce University, and I think that's because they didn't have an ROTC program for black people at Ohio State University. So he gave up his credits that he had already earned in Ohio State, transferred to Wilberforce, where they did have an ROTC program. So it tells you, to me, it tells a little bit about his character. He said, the heck with the, the credits. I'm going to go do what I think is right. Throw a little gumption in there, you know, here I come. And he transferred over to Wilbingham. And um, he trained under the legendary uh, Aaron Fisher, Cap Fisher, they call him. He was a highly decorated World War I veteran. And, um, he lived a long life. I think he lived from like 1985. So, Fox and, and um, Fisher were cut from the same cloth. They were the, they, they got all, they were, they were uh, one of a kind. I can, I can see the relationship through it. You have to read through the lines. Um, but definitely, you could see the character of uh, Fisher and Fox. Um, I, I, I actually, I, I, um, I encourage you to get online and read about Lieutenant Fox on the you know, just go to Google and just write up Lawrence Fox, I mean, um, John Fox. There's all kinds of information. It's very, very interesting. The whole, the whole story. I'm just getting to the beginning of it. I think they ought to have a movie. <laughs> um, so anyway, he graduated from Wilbingham in uh, 1941 as a commissioned second lieutenant in the United States Army. Uh, he trained at Fort Devens, right here in Massachusetts. And uh, he was quickly promoted to first lieutenant. In 1942, he married a Brockton girl, Arlene Narrow. Um, 
Jean's great aunt. <laughs> and no, she's my cousin. Cousin. I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> and they, met, they met at Wilberforce. At, they, they met at Wilberforce. So and that makes sense. And she brought him to Brown. Good girl. <laughs> so um, so they were married at the chapel at Fort Dennis. So we're gonna we're gonna go a little bit a little bit ahead because I'm gonna tell a story as we go. He also received, um, oh, before I go too much further, we do have another uh, Medal of Honor uh, recipient from Brockton, Gordon Craig, Corporal Gordon, Gordon Craig received his Medal of Honor for actions in uh, Korea. Um, he has a, uh, the armory on West Chestnut Street is named after him, and he has a memorial in, uh, I think, in West Bridgewater, so he has a West Bridgewater or an East Bridgewater. So to the best of my knowledge, we have two, two Medal of Honors recipients from Brockton. Um, I'm still, like I say, when I dig into Brockton history, I find out more and more. So I could find a third or fourth, I don't know yet. But that's Cor uh, Corporal Craig. Okay, Fox, in addition to receiving the Medal of Honor, I don't know all these medals, but the, um, the Purple Heart, obviously, the, uh, if I could read that, American um, Defense Medal. This is the American Campaign Medal. European Middle Eastern Campaign. So both him and um, Cosgrove received that, that medal. This is the World War II Victory Medal. And this is Wilberforce. I just wanted to give you a, a, an idea of what Wilberforce is. This is Aaron Fisher. I mentioned him. He was the instructor. Um, lived till about 1985. Wilberforce uh, University, some of the old sketches. So this is Fort Devens, right here. And this is where he, uh, he does his training. Ironically, my brother was uh, just stationed up there recently, so it, it, it really hasn't changed a heck of a lot. <laughs> Even the old guard station is still there. They don't use it, but it's still sitting there. Uh, yeah, Sandra. this is Sandra. She was, um, so John and Eileen were born in 1942, I mean uh, married in 1942, and Sandra was born in December of 1942. She is right here in the top right. Left, top left. The other right. Yeah, the other right. <laughs> um, future nursing school, I'm pretty sure she became a nurse. She became a nurse and then she became a doctor. Then a doctor. So that's, that's Sandra. She's still living and she lives in Houston. Yep. And we have to, um, we are trying to get this memorial built for her and we're looking for next year to get the memorial. And we'll, we'll get her out here, we'll fly her out here somehow. Um, I'll ask my rich friends to take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> I've never met the girl, but <laughs> very admirable. Okay, we're going to get to the battle a little bit here too. Um, let me let me tie things up a little. So after he um, he graduated, he was a commissioned second lieutenant, promoted to the first lieutenant, got married, had a had a baby girl. Um, he was then um, assigned to the 598th Field Artillery Battalion, Cannon Company, 366th Infantry Division. And um, from what I understand, he was very good at, at what he did, which was, um, yeah, kind of like logistically um, calculating um, engineering things like that. Um, so he, he, was, um, he was very sought after once he was assigned to this. He was, he was the guy, you know, to direct the artillery and, and all that. So um, before, what, what they always said about him, and I, I got this from, from online, was that um, he was described by his friends as being outspoken, jovial, happy-go-lucky, life of the party. 
Colleen Fox spoke of his sense of humor, but emphasized he also had a, a serious side. So I exclamated that one because obviously, you know, his character showed that he, he definitely had a serious side. And um, I have Eileen Fox passing on, on December 11th, 2015. Is that, is that right, Jim? Uh, yes. I think so? Yeah. yeah. So Eileen just passed away a couple of years ago. Um, and again, like we, we know now, she's, she's buried over here in Yes. Yep. Yeah. So, okay, so yeah, this is the, uh, this is the battle that actually took place and why, why John Fox was awarded the uh, Medal of Honor. The, um, at the end of November 1944, the 366 was sent to assist the 92nd Infantry Division near Somacolia, Italy, in northern Italy. And this was just before Christmas Day. So John Fox actually volunteered for the unpopular Christmas Day duty. You just, you know, you, you, you always hear that saying, don't volunteer for anything in the Army anyway, but especially for Christmas time. But he actually volunteered to be what they called a forward observer. And, and that's, that's, that's what he did. Now, during World War II, the war was kind of winding down in 1944, late 1944 to be basically over in, in uh, April of 1945, approximately when uh, Hitler committed, committed suicide. Uh, suicide. That's the Euro European theater, anyway. But there's still quite a bit of fighting up in here in northern, northern Italy. So the, the Germans, Italy had already surrendered. They were now an ally with the, uh, the United States. Germany was trying to retake Soma Colonia um, because of its position in near the coast and overlook, it overlooked the valley. So as you can see, it overlooked everything. So it was a very strategic area. Soma Colonia was a very street strategic area in the war. I can get a little bit uh, a little closer for you. The night, actually on Christmas night, um, the 25th, not the 26th, um, the, the German soldiers started to close in on Soma Colonia. And Lieutenant Fox was on the second floor of a, a local house, and he was direct, directing artillery fire closer and closer to its position. Now, the commander on the other end would adjust it a little bit because Fox was just bringing it in closer to him. I mean, he was getting real close. The Germans were coming, they were sort of, they had his, actually the whole uh, company was under siege. Uh, 25 uh, Italian partisans volunteered to stay with him and John Fox. And the Germans were closing in and closing in. But he kept on calling an artillery by a back and closer to him, closer to him, closer to him. Finally, he just, he called in the artillery on his own position. Right, right on top of him. So he knew he was going to die. The commander questioned it, and the fox just replied, fire it. And that was the last, this is, this is somebody else saying, that was the last I heard of John Robert Fox. He died, uh, 20, uh, seven of the 25 Italian partisans died, and about 100 German soldiers. So his actions made it possible for the United States to regroup retake the town, and it took them a couple of days to do that, but it probably saved, um, you know, countless American lives. If the Germans had ever really taken control of that whole, that whole hill, it would have been awful to, to try to retake it. So that's the basic story. Um, I'm going to show you some other things that happened. But the, the sad part about it, too, is they didn't receive the Medal of Honor from 1997 from President Clinton. Blacks, not only him, the blacks were not awarded the Medal of Honors until 1997 from World War II. Now the irony of that is, black soldiers had received the Medal of Honor from World War I and as far back as the uh, Civil War. So it, it's, it's a racist thing, but it's not a racist thing. It's just, it, it's just to me, it's just dumb. I mean, why, why it happened, everybody knows why it happened, but how can, how can we award 1900, um, we were giving Medal of Honor to, to black soldiers. Yet in 1942, we weren't. <laughs> it just, you know, something, something's wrong. Yeah, just crazy. Um, yes. So um, we're going to do something here to honor him by the uh, 
the new memorial. And the, the other thing, I gotta, I gotta bring it up because it's the father and father A research, it's, it, just gets, it just gets crazy. Um, the first black soldier to receive a medal was in um, 1864. <laughs> 1864 for, for uh, Civil War. The, the, the person that actually earned a, a um, Medal of Honor didn't receive it until 1900, black soldier. His action was in 1863. So it gets technical. His action was in 1863, so he didn't get his medal until 1900. The other soldier got his in 1864, and technically is the first one to receive the Medal of Honor. So it's, it's, it's just, it's just, I don't know. <laughs> this is the artist rendition of the um, the artillery hitting the house that John was on, was in, second floor. You can find this on the. Um, Online under the medal, just go to Medal of Honor, John R. Fox Medal of Honor. The citation is there too, so it's, it's a nice little site. And uh, I encourage you to do it. This is what the house looked like after the next day. Can you see that? Okay. I can see it perfectly. I'm not sure how you can see it. Um, they have a memorial. That it almost went up immediately for him. In, in, uh, in Italy. He does have memorials in the United States. I will get to that. This is the ceremony. I believe this was in 2013. Yeah, that's probably why it says 2013. Um, they, they, kind of, they just re did a kind of a re um, rededication of it. And that, and that was for, the, um, for everybody involved. Um, Fox, the Pattersons, anybody else at that fought. So Fox is acknowledged. You know, he is acknowledged in the world, but we're a little bit behind. This is Morgan Charles speaking, right here. And that's Sandra's son. And he's uh, relaying a message that Arlene, a uh, message of thanks to the community. This, this plaque here I know has the seven uh, names of the seven uh, Italian Protestants. And, um, Right over here in the bottom right, right here, and actually in the bottom left, that's another memorial to Fox. Yeah. One or the other. I'm not sure which one. On the, on the memorial, we, Fox is the Fox is the focus. But we plan on putting a little plaque with the four four names and three names of um, Pattersons on each side of it. So a little bit of research here. Okay. There's also a uh, the disabled uh, American veterans is named in Fox's honor in Whitman also. So he's recognized over there pretty well. <coughs> this is in Ohio. And this is the American Legion Post 631. It's in Cincinnati. Um, it's in the suburb of Cincinnati, actually. So John, John Fox is right up on the top. That's him right there. And right outside of the, uh, the post is a nice memorial for him. So he's recognized in Cincinnati, which I just found that out recently. So that was nice. Um, he is on the Potosi Memorial, as I uh, mentioned earlier. His name's right here, John F. Fox. And again, he's at City Hall with everybody, uh, with all the uh, World War II veterans. And City Hall, while I'm on it, was actually designed as a um, Civil War museum along with being in the town hall at the time. And um, if you go in, you'll, you'll see the old Civil War murals on the wall. The Massachusetts 54th, the images are supposedly Brockton people. The people on the horses, the images are from Brockton. So it could be Fletcher, um, Fletcher Webster that I named earlier. So we really do have quite a, quite a, um, history. Again, I'm going to go back to the memorial. What we're, what we're planning is we've actually formed a committee. Gary's on it, Gene's on it to represent the family. Um, we, we've got a uh, little bit of support from the, from the city in that some of the city councils know about it. But I haven't really told the city about it yet, so I'm not faulting them. I'm, pretty sure, I'm, I'm positive that the mayor and everybody will get behind this but they really don't know officially that we're, we're gonna be attempting this. 
So, but we have formed a committee. Steve Kumbi's not here. He's the, he's, uh, he's the one that actually dug a lot of this research out. We have five or six people that are working on this. Uh, Councilor Sullivan and Councilor um, Bowell and uh, Beauregard. And I'm sure the others will get behind it too. We have an election year coming up. We'll see who's, who the 11 councilors are when the, when the time comes. But we're looking for grassroots support from the community too. We want to be able to put this plan together. We're going we're gonna to meet here at the library, put the research together, get everybody together. You know, let the mayor know. We're not going to blindside them and walk in on a, on a meeting or something. We'll let them know. But it would be nice if the community got me back behind the uh, Fox Memorial. So um, keep this in mind. We're going to be doing more presentations. I'll get better at this, too, and get the research down and uh, make this completely a community thing. So um, I'll go on to the... In other words, you don't have to be a researcher to help out. You can help me dig holes when we put the azaleas in. You know, you can, you can help me put the, uh, the flag up. You know, that you don't have to be a, a historian or a, have a genealogy background. Anything at all, you can come down and trim the bushes and do anything. You know, grunt work, I call it. That's what I'll be doing. And, because um, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do something uh, special. So that, this is where I plan on putting it, um, the Potosi Memorial here. I plan on putting it like right in here, right in this area, and then open up the Potosi Memorial so that the fence is opened up. And then what I talked about, see how it's locked up? We can open it up a little bit. It's right on Crescent Street. The chance of it being um, vandalized is a little less than if it was maybe beyond, beyond the tree or whatever. But um, I want to enhance what's already there, add the, add the Fox Memorial, and we have the Cosgrove pool over to the right, to the left. Um, where that old guy is standing is, is exactly where I, I want to put it. Again, there may be a, a gas tank under there, and I might not be able to. I'll have to check with the city. Um, I don't think we have to dig too far down. We just probably have to level it off. Yeah. So here's a little bit of close-up of the Potosi. They keep it pretty well cleaned up. I go down there myself and keep it clean. There's a groundhog living right over here. One of these days, the bush is going to fall over. <laughs> the hole's getting deep. Uh, a little close-up. This was Memorial Day a couple of years ago. And this overlooks Salisbury Park. So as you can see, it's a, it's a beautiful park. Um, our, our idea is to uh, add a few of these benches along, along the outside there. This one happens to be right outside the White Ave uh, entrance to the library. We just bought this um, brought from the Library Foundation sponsored this. Uh, Fred Howell, um, I don't know if he was an original, yeah, co-founder of the Brockton Library Foundation. So the bench is probably about this big. And what we plan on doing is having this overlook the Salisbury Park, and we're going to put the, the uh, members, um, the World War I veterans from that area on there, so it becomes an east side veterans area. Um, this has, this is a different fundraiser, a whole different animal than the uh, fox. Fox is the uh, focus. So this is just some photos of the park itself. You can see the uh, you can see the um, the potential. The potential is huge. It's a beautiful park. Um, unfortunately, that nice tree right there met its demise this last winter, <laughs> and it come tumbling down. We used to, yeah, it, it fell that way, and it did quite a bit of damage over here on the right too. Um, so. In the background here is Union Cemetery. It's on Center Street and uh, Lyman, Lyman Street. And I'm assuming Union Cemetery was built um, as, a, as a Civil War cemetery. So I'm, I'm assuming there's quite a few Civil War veterans buried in, uh, in Union Cemetery. So you can see the veteran thing right, right there. It's, it's, it's all right there. This is Union Cemetery itself. So that was, this is right beyond the tree line. Tree line here. I keep pointing like you guys can see it. This is the tree line. And this is what's on the other side. OK, this is good. <laughs> this is actually a GI Joe doll with Lieutenant Fox's likeness. And if I had known it was out, I would have bought it a long time ago. It's worth big money these days. Um, so again, my rich friends are going to have to get on eBay and, uh, and find one of these. Um, 
So he was honored by Hasbro, obviously, and that's his likeness. Um, it reminds me of the Strand Theater Memorial, the firefighter, where the likeness of the Strand Theater Memorial is Chief Farrell. So I, I kind of want to, whether we can pull it off or not, I'd like to get a statue for Fox that has, the, uh, has his mural. Um, I mean, likeness, no, that could put us over budget. You know, I don't know, but I am going to look into it. I think that would be a neat, a neat memorial. I think I'm all the way back to the beginning. I am. So any questions? Yes? Uh, the people that were the same uh, people that was in the movie Blurry? I think it was, yeah. Was it the 54th? The 54th was from Massachusetts. Yeah. Um, I think the was from Richmond. That's a good question. 7th, 16th? 7th, 16th. 16th, okay. Yeah. That look, don't look at it, you know. That's a very good question. I'm surprised I didn't think of that myself. <laughs> I want to go back to this. Yeah. Now the. Um, I'm going to look into that because you got me on that one. I should know that. Um, the memorial uh, statue at Perkins Park, um, it's a Civil War memorial. Uh, sail sailors and soldiers of, the, of North Bridgewater at the time. We weren't even Brockton at the time. The Civil War was 1863, 4, I believe. And um, we became the city of Brockton in 1881. I think we were the town of Brockton in 1874. So if you read the memorial up there, it'll say, Soldiers of sailing soldiers of North Bridgewater, and um, unfortunately, the, the condition of the park, uh, what, what happens around the park, kind of, you know, kind of, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a disgrace considering what the what the park was built for. But I understand that the, um, from the Civil War, or the Revolutionary War, rather, that when they call it the call came up, the Brockton, Brockton, that's where they they formed. They actually went across the street from the. Um, Porter Street Church, and uh, whatever the church was at the time, and, and they actually just signed up right then and there. The Revolutionary War was on, and they showed up. And then when the Civil War, that's, that's, way back, that's, yeah. That's good Washington. Yeah, no, that's but it, but they did the same thing for the Revolutionary War. They just showed up and signed up, and off they went to war. Um, Civil War, the same thing. They they just went to the town common, and and, and signed up. Yeah, there wasn't a draft. Um, they well, there was eventually. That's what they did. They just signed on and off they went that night. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I'm not. I'm not doing this. I'm doing this because he was a brave man, anyway. You know. And, uh, I, I get. I get caught up in the history um, of how Brockton, a city of the size of Brockton, diversity. I guess you call it the diverse history that we have. We can talk about shoes, we can talk about sports, we can talk about veterans, and you name it, and it came some, somewhere along the line, <laughs> it came from Brockton. So when, when I'm digging through this and I find out a guy named Lieutenant John Fox has a Brockton connection, it, it's just very intriguing. I said, how the hell, and then to the, then the, then the know somewhat of his family here, it just, it just amazes me all over and over and over again. <laughs> well, that could, that's a whole other story. <laughs> and we, uh, yeah, you just, you, you get, you, I'll, I'll give you a little example. Um, like Gary brought it up. So um, I'm doing research on the Spentonas family up that owned a farm on, 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 on near Tukas. And that's all I was really looking into. And I find out that the, uh, the president of Lithuania is Spentonas. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I mean, that's, that's crazy, you know, and uh, that was World War II related too because he got exiled when, uh, when the, war, the war started and he ended up in New Jersey of all places. And then uh, eventually the family ended up in Brockton. So uh, the same thing over and over again. Um, so that's about it. I hope I did a half a decent job. This is kind of the beginning of something uh, that I think is going to be uh, community driven, real, uh, worth doing, and um, I hope you'll stay uh, Stay, in, stay uh, informed here from the library because we'll be running this whole thing for an idea.
we have a research room over here, a research room over here, and we're going to build on, on the research. Um, to be honest with you, more on the Fox angle of the Cosgrove, but pretty well set on the, on the Cosgrove um, angle. Um, there are other veterans, you know, too, Craig, we'll do a little bit on him. Um, uh, but that was a little more recent. I think we have to catch up and do this uh, Lieutenant Fox thing. So if you can uh, stay tuned and be involved, it would be appreciated. And thanks for coming. And Gary? So without having any rend uh, renderings or anything, can you explain what the memorial might look like? Uh, well, I want to keep them. Do you have a line? Anyway? Yeah. Well, just better if I show you. Thing has a mind of its own. So again, right where I have the arrow. So granite. Yep, and the two there would be two smaller plaques on each side, here and here, with the partisans listed on it. Um, we could put a um, what I call a placket. It would be just a sign off to the right if that would tell the story. So the plaque itself in the center would be John Robert Fox, but on the right we could actually get into the full action of the, um, the commands that were coming in, the, the, uh, the commands that he was giving, um, so that the, the history will just really make sense. And we, I mean, um, you, like I said, I mentioned they should do a movie on the guy. We, we couldn't put everything because we would cover all of Salisbury Park, the story so big. And, um, now, would you put a bust of that other picture of the GI Joe? I'd love to. I'd love to. I'd love to be put like right over here. I'd like to put like right over here. See where I'm circling? Mm -hmm. I'd love to have like a. I'd love to have a, a little statue <laughs> of him on the phone. That that, that would be expensive. I would, I would assume. Well, you have to put it out of bronze. So so. Yeah, but I, I would uh, I would love to do that. But I'm I'm concentrating on the uh, the granite and the black and the stuff here. Gene happens to live right next to um, a near neighbor. Uh, is it the, the granite, uh, the monument yeah. place? <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's my idea there. The pathways and everything are just kind of um, that's just subjective. We can design it to any any way we like. Um, but the idea is just to honor a, a brave man and see what we can do for the community. Now. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.